this lesson, we'll explore the rich world of materials the fine and high jewelry is made of. You'll learn about the most popular precious metals, with their strength and weaknesses, and about the alternative materials that jewelers love to combine with precious gems or metals. Precious metals. Precious metals, often combined with stones, are the main components in fine and high jewelry, adored for their beautiful luster and high financial value. The rarer, the higher is their value and price. In fact, precious materials are the reason why jewelry is considered an investment. We'll begin this exciting journey with the most famous of them all, gold. The very first metal to be worked by man was gold, believed to represent the sun. The oldest known map of a gold mine was drawn in ancient Egypt, 1320 to 1200 BC, with the metal described in hieroglyphs as more plentiful than dirt. Yep, that's another way of putting it. There are two categories of gold found in nature, primary and secondary. Primary gold is often found in rock formations, which becomes mines if there is a large amount of gold. Secondary gold is found in small waterways, running through gold intense rock and mineral formations, carrying small pieces called nuggets or flakes. Gold alloys. Gold is an extremely soft and malleable metal. In its pure form, it's too soft for most jewelry making, so it's hardened by the addition of other metals, like copper, silver, nickel, palladium, and zinc. This combination of metals is called an alloy. Carat weight. The purity of gold is measured in carats. Pure gold has 24 carats. The most frequently used carat weight in fine and high jewelry today is 18 carats, which contains 75% gold and 25% other metals. The lower the carat weight, the less gold it contains. The minimum carat weight for an item to be called gold varies between countries. In the US, 10 carat is the legal minimum accepted. While in France, the UK, Austria, Portugal, and Ireland, 9 carat, and in Denmark and Greece, 8 carat. In jewelry, the gold carat weight or fineness, which is the precious metal content, is stamped inside each piece. Colors Yellow gold. This is the most popular color in jewelry today and available in a range of different tonalities. It has an alloy of gold, silver, and copper. Yellow gold is hypoallergenic, meaning that it's unlikely to cause any allergic reaction. It's also tarnish resistant. White gold. White gold is created in an alloy of gold and palladium. It's usually plated with rhodium to create a harder surface with a brighter shine. White gold needs to be replated with time since the surface tends to get darker and a bit dull when you wear it. Rose gold. Rose gold is sometimes also called pink gold and is made in an alloy of gold, silver, and copper. While yellow, white, and rose gold are the most popular ones in the market, there is also black gold. This color is usually created by plating white gold with rhodium or ruthenium. In gray gold, made with an alloy of gold, copper, and iron. Other less frequently used colors are green with an alloy of gold, silver, cadmium, and copper and a blue gold with an alloy of gold and iron. There is also beautiful purple gold containing gold and aluminium, which has a higher carat weight between 19 and 20 carats. Platinum. Platinum is a silverish white metal and one of the rarest elements in the earth crust making it extremely valuable and even more expensive than gold. 
The earliest traces were found as early as 1200 BC in ancient Egyptian burial sites. Platinum and fine and high jewelry is very pure, between 90 to 95 percent, with a strength and durability that's legendary. That's why many of the most valuable gems are set in this beautiful metal, to make sure that the gems are held as safe as possible. Unlike white gold, platinum doesn't need replating and keeps its sparkly white surface. Platinum's purity also makes it naturally hypoallergenic. Silver Silver is a soft, white, precious metal found in the Earth crest in its pure form. Throughout history, it's been used in coin making, jewelry, tableware, mirrors, musical instruments, medication, and much, much more. Mexico, Peru, and China are some of the world's top producers. In Christianity, silver coins were believed to be the bribe price of Judas to betray Jesus. In some pagan religions, it's associated with magical powers and feminine energy. Folklore associates silver with vampires and werewolves. In its pure form, silver is too soft, so to make it strong, it's combined with other metals. The most frequently used silver in fine jewelry is sterling silver, which is an alloy of 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper. Silver is less expensive than gold and platinum, having to do with the rarity of the metal. Silver oxidizes, meaning that it becomes black with time, requiring frequent polishing to keep the metal white and shiny. Oxidation is also processed to give sterling silver black patina, it gives the jewelry an antique or tarnished look. The process consists of taking clean sterling silver and using a chemical like lever or sulfur to treat it. Rhodium Rhodium is a precious metal like silver, gold and platinum, just a lot more expensive. Sometimes it's even 10 times the price of gold. It's one of the rarest and most expensive metals in the world, with a beautiful silvery shine. And discovered in 1803 by William Hyde Wollaston, it's found as a byproduct of other metals like platinum. White gold is plated with a thin rhodium layer to improve its appearance, while sterling silver is rhodium plated for tarnish resistance. It's not used for solid jewelry for a couple of reasons. When pure, it's very brittle and not very malleable. The price of rhodium varies a lot, making it a less stable investment than other precious metals. Ruthenium Ruthenium is a shiny grey metal belonging to the platinum group, invented by Russian-born scientist Karl Ernst Klaus in 1844. In jewelry, it's used to plate other precious metals, making their surfaces more resistant. It's also used to alter the color, being a great alternative to rhodium plating for turning a light surface dark or almost black. Alternative materials There are lots of wonderful materials in the luxury industry today that look great combined with precious metals and gems. Here are the key reasons why jewelers love to use them. Non-precious materials are a lot less expensive letting you create exclusive pieces with substantial volumes at competitive price points. Your customers get a lot of bling for their money, and if well executed, they will look just as striking as pieces completely made with precious materials. Contrast A luxurious metal or stone can look incredible next to different textures, like matte wood for example. Alternative materials can add character and color to a piece. The key to successfully pulling this combination off is to go with materials that are already valued on the luxury market, or that you think have the potential to be. Combined with great design and state-of-the-art craftsmanship, you'll have pieces that will make people go, wow, I want that. Customers and the press always look for newness and innovation. So if you can come up with an interesting new combination, you're on a good path to catch their interest. Wood Some of the most popular types of wood used in the jewelry industry today are rosewood, 
teakwood, ebony, palm wood, and sandalwood. Before making jewelry with this amazing material, there are a couple of important things you need to know. Wood detracts or expands depending on humidity. When going from a humid environment into a dry one, it often cracks, which is why the best jewelers dry it before working it, to make sure it will retain its shape once the jewel is done. You can turn it into basically any sculptural shape you want. Carve it, pierce it, make beads. The possibilities are endless. Ceramic. Ceramic used in jewelry is not the same type as the one in your coffee cups. It's much stronger and more durable. In jewelry, you often see it as links or modules for bracelets or watches. Ceramic comes in a lot of different colors and finishes vary from matte to high shine. Bone. Buffalo bone has a natural ivory color and lends itself perfectly to beautiful, intricate carvings. Asia is famous for their exquisite bone carvings, and at the jewelry fairs you can find vendors selling a variety of already carved samples for you to personalize. Or you can ask them to custom make pieces based on your own designs. A thing you need to know about when commissioning a vendor to do something for you, regardless what you're ordering, is to ask them to just make one piece that you can approve of first, before they produce quantities. Or you'll most probably get some unpleasant surprises. We all perceive things differently, and no matter how good the vendor and the intentions, it's very easy to misunderstand each other. Horn. Horn is an amazing looking material with beautiful natural patterns. Colors range from white, cream, brown, gray, and black, and each piece is unique. There are lots of shapes on the market like cuffs, bangles, and link chains, sold as subcomponents for jewelry. You can also have shapes custom made for you. Horn tends to warp, so the easiest way to use it without having any problems with time is to let it be free without any precise metal constraints. Leather. We already explored the perks of using leather in the chapter about jewelry. So let's have a look at the main types in fine and high jewelry today. Ostrich, calf, buffalo, crocodile, alligator, and python. A good way to select your leather is by looking at what high-end fashion brands are offering. Trends come and go pretty quickly, so this will give you a great indication of what leathers are hot on the market. There are some important things you need to think about when combining this material with your jewels. At the leather fairs, you can find lots of beautiful types of leather straps, braids, and cords, already finished and ready to use. If you buy the raw material to finish yourself, make sure that you cure the details and make exclusive looking finishes. Never use the leather from endangered species. Test wear a piece before you buy it in quantities. Some leathers flake or lose its color pretty easily, so make sure you get one that's durable, or your customers will return it. While white and very light leathers look fantastic when they're new, they get really dirty quickly, making customers disappointed. Silk and Satin Silk is great in bands for bracelets or chokers, or as fine cords. In fine and high jewelry, it's usually lined, with a bit of thickness to give the piece substance. Cords are most commonly made in satin rather than silk. At the jewelry and leather fairs, you can find lots of vendors who sell beautifully finished straps or cords for you to use in your jewelry. Steel. Stainless steel is very popular to combine with precious metals, especially for men's jewels. It also has a nice luster that's similar to silver or gold. Titanium. Titanium is a lightweight, strong metal that ranges from gray to silver in color. Polished titanium is a few shades darker than platinum in color. It was discovered in England in 1791 and got its name from the Titans in Greek mythology. 
Through a process called anodizing, titanium changes color and can come in an incredible rainbow of different metallic shades. Anodized titanium is resistant to the elements, but less to scratching and friction. Titanium is mostly used in men's jewelry. Mokume Mokume is a Japanese metalworking process, creating a mixed metal laminate with layered patterns resembling wood grains. It was first developed in the 17th century, originally used for swords. Today it's more common in men's jewelry than in women's. In fine and high jewelry, precious metal or gems are usually the highlights of your piece, while the other materials are there to complement. That doesn't mean that the majority of the piece needs to be precious, but the preciousness needs to be there and in focus. Thank you.